everybody welcome back to texas all water fishing i am ruben rodriguez and today i'm going to be talking to you about sheep's head yes the convict fish now sheep's head are very tasty fish they are well sought sought after for their clean white meat now myself i really like catching sheep sheep's head because they're just fun to catch and reel in so today I'm going to talk to you about some of those tips, techniques, rigs that Captain Cody Dunn and myself use out there around the jetties. Okay, so real quick, where can you find sheep's head? You can find them around any kind of pylons, any kind of posts, docks, bridges, underwater structure, rock groins, or like in our case, we fish with them out there by the jetties, rocks as well. Whether you're fishing from the bank or a boat or even a kayak or even wade fishing. So that's some of those places where you can find the sheep head. What do sheep's heads eat? They eat any kind of crustacean crab blue crab fiddler crab they'll eat oysters they'll eat barnacles they have those real strong jaws and to bite into a lot of that hard stuff that's why we use certain hooks and other hooks that we stay away from but i'm getting too far ahead of myself we're going to switch over real fast i'm going to switch over to this other camera behind me and i'm going to show you a couple of poplar rigs that captain cody and myself use all right so here's a couple of rigs that we like to use the first one is a split shot rig you simply put a split shot weight on the line and that's the weight that is going to hold down help hold down your your leader we like to use around 40 pound fluorocarbon line we typically put on the top of the leader line we'll put either a chatter weight like you see here and attach your real main line here or we like to use a swivel now not only will this help bring a little more tension with the chatter weight but this will also help your leader move a little more free in the water but beside that it's also a great place to be able to grab your line and be able to handle the fish now you can put anywhere from two feet to 12 inches of leader line and on the end of your line we like to use a j-hook gamagatsu makes a great j-hook the size that we typically use is a size two or a size three hook now when you are using a split shot rig you will have a split shot weight if you're not familiar with them you simply use the pliers and you will open that up place your line at, at your designated area typically I like to stay around either about a foot to a foot and a half away from my j-hook and then you place your split shot on your leader line and you simply close it with a pair of pliers now like I said these split shots come in all different sizes so based on the water movement and based on the bite is how much weight I would use to keep it down in that strike zone. Now there's a bunch of different kind of hooks that you can use when you are fishing for sheep's head. Like I said, my first preference is a J hook. You can also use Gamagatsu has a octopus hook and very popular is a treble hook. The one of the things that I would warn you about using a treble hook is because these sheep heads have very strong jaws, very strong mouths, and they will bite down on your treble hook, and a lot of times they will, they will bend this up. And then after a while, one or two bends on your treble hook, and you can easily strain out your hook. I would really try to stick away from using circle hooks because, like I said, their jaws are not only strong, but they're also very they're also very thick, very bone, very thick bone straw jaws. So when you have a circle hook, it's going to be a little hard for you to penetrate into that 
in my experience, I have missed a lot of hookups using circle hooks because I used to use, I used to primarily use circle hooks no matter what I was no matter what I was fishing for. But when it comes to sheephead, I stay away from these guys. All right, and the other rig, the second rig that we will use is similar to a drop shot. It is a get or done rig. Now, if you are interested in learning how to tie this rig, I will leave a link in the description below. We made a video talking about and showing how you tie this rig during the flounder season. We also use it for various other types of fishing and one of the types is that we do use it for sheep heads. Pretty simple, like I said, it's like a drop shot rig. On the bottom, you have your weight and midline or close, maybe just a few inches away from the your weight is where we place the J-hook. And then again, your fluorocarbon line would be attached either swivel or chatter weight to your main line leading up. Now the different size of sinker, different size of weight isn't a, really based on your the water current and the water movement. How strong the current is, how strong the water is moving typically means how much weight you need to hold. Hold your leader to the bottom in this strike zone. Now there is a lot of technique involved when it comes to fishing for sheephead. Now you wouldn't really think that too much because you are just simply throwing cut or live bait out. But a lot of it depends on the water conditions. Now the way we fish for the sheephead a lot of times around the jetties, you get a lot of good water current. Now, if it's some water's moving fast or the water's moving slow, then there's different ways, different rigs, different techniques you can use to capitalize on those sheephead and feed them and find them where they're feeding on bottom. Now, one of my first preferred one of my first preferred rig for fishing for sheephead is this what I just showed you, this split shot rig. Now, the reason why is because that little weight there it's easier to keep that from getting hung up because let's face it when you are fishing around the jetties you are fishing around the rocks you will encounter a lot of structure structure means hang-ups but that's where the fish are so i prefer to fish with the split rate rig just for the simple fact i don't lose a lot of tackle i don't have to tie on a lot the downside is is if the current is moving good if there's good water movement good current this is never going to touch the bottom. Most of the time, it's not going to touch the bottom. A lot of times what we're doing is if we're, if we do have little, minimum to little water current, if the water and the current is moving this way, we will cast out ahead of the boat or ahead of where we want and let the current take the lure, take the rig and the bait down current a little bit and then it'll start hitting and touching the bottom so it's very important if you have current moving this way don't cast at the end of the boat because the odds are it's never going to get to the bottom it's never going to touch the bottom the current's coming from this way to that way cast there let your weight let your rig let your bait slowly fall to the bottom and odds are you're going to get that strike zone somewhere around in front of you because that's where it's touching when they're aggressive, when the sheephead are aggressive and biting a lot, be fast on that trigger because as soon as that shrimp gets down to the bottom, you're going to want to be ready to set the hook. Now, that's 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 why I prefer using this. Now, I talked a minute about a chatter weight. A lot of times that little chatter will help trigger a bite no matter what kind of fish it is. So I do like to put that chatter weight on or that swivel right here because not only does will it help you and help your bait move a little freer with that swivel as well, but it also gives you a place to grab. So when you're trying to handle the fish, you can easily grab your chatter weight or your swivel and kind of handle them in the boat and, and not make too much of a fuss. Another technique is to just simply put on more split weights to your rig and try to keep it weight down like that but one of the things that we do is that we will also switch it up and use we'll use cody dunn's get her done rig which is pretty simple pretty similar to a drop shot now 
one of the things that you keep that you have to keep in mind is because of the heavier weight whether you're using half an ounce or an ounce of weight is that this weight to, will tend to get down there in those rocks and you're gonna get hung up a lot more so using this you're gonna get hung up a lot more but with that, like I said with that water moving with that water movement moving fast is really not gonna give you much of an option the purpose is to be down on the bottom be there where the sheep heads are fishing where the sheep heads are biting that's where you want to be fishing one of the other techniques you can use is not just your rig but also your bait also the shrimp now when we were out there previous trip we ran into we've got some really big shrimp now when you're starting using shrimp that are like four and a half inches five inches six inches long that water current whether it's moving faster even the slow water current has a tendency to get that shrimp and let that shrimp parachute up so it's never gonna get down to the bottom so what we were doing is that we were just ripping the shrimp in half now i know it's going to kill the shrimp and yeah the possibility for the shrimp surviving long isn't in your favor but when you were on the sheep head, like we were on the sheep head, and then we start getting into grabbing into some of our larger shrimp in our live well, well, the shrimp aren't going to last for very long anyway because a sheep head's going to bite them. So we were ripping the shrimp in half. So to prevent that parachute, that shoot that shrimp from parachuting up and helping keep it on the bottom near the bait near the bite. So what were we doing with the rest of the shrimp? Well, the rest of the shrimp, we're kind of letting it dry out a little bit. One of the things that Captain Cody told me that he noticed is that reds will eat live shrimp. But he has caught a lot of reds on fresh dead shrimp. So we will leave that shrimp off to the side. And as it dried a little bit, got a little more stink on it. We would drop it down on one of our get her done rigs and we would catch a red. So we were getting both of best worlds. We're catching the sheephead and we started getting in the reds because we're using some of the, the other half of that shrimp and getting down there the little stinkiness of the shrimp and attracting those reds as well. So hats off to Cody. One more thing that I would mention is when you are looking to change it up, our bite stopped. We the the ripping the shrimp in half wasn't working even putting dead shrimp wasn't working so we wanted to change the presentation of the shrimp a little bit or captain cody did and captain cody took a quarter started ripping a quarter of the shrimp tail off and hooking the shrimp through that opening that we just ripped off and dropping it down like that and for some whatever reason that those sheep had like that presentation of the shrimp and they started biting they started it rejuvenated the bite and they started hitting on that so that was pretty cool to see, to be able to see captain cody out there doing his work and changing it up and keeping us on the bike throughout the day but i hope this helps you uh, if you have any questions please leave them below i try to answer them the best of my ability I, even if i have to get on the computer and do a little research or reach out to cody i try to answer them the best of my ability now if you have any tips or techniques rigs or anything that helps you whether you're catching sheephead flounder or trout what live or dead bait well leave them below because i know i get a lot of stuff out of it and i also know the viewers and other subscribers also get a lot of great information because we have a lot of great anglers out there. We have a lot of great fishermen in our area. So any information you have, please don't hesitate to leave it below. I don't know everything. I don't pretend to know everything. If you leave a comment, I don't think you're a know-it-all. I just think you're somebody who's trying to help me out and maybe another viewer. But thanks again. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hopefully next time you catch me hooking up. Thanks. Thanks.